On November 29, 2006, the Australian HMAS Canimbia landing platform amphibious ship was taking part in intense anti-terrorism exercises off the coast of Fiji that entailed extracting personnel from hostile zones in record times. The Australian Defence Force was rehearsing the expedited evacuation of Australian nationals from Fiji in the event of a sudden coup. In a daring attempt to make the landing section of the exercise even quicker than in previous attempts, UH-60 Blackhawk 221 swooped down into the landing deck at dangerous speeds while carrying four crew and six soldiers from the Special Air Service Regiment. A sailor then captured the shocking moment in which the helicopter slammed into Canimbia's deck shattering its tail while spectacularly bouncing, and then plunged into the sea. Chaos ensued, and every second was crucial in the desperate attempt to rescue the passengers from the sinking helicopter as the sea swallowed them. Chaos in Paradise In 2006, Fiji was experiencing severe social unrest. The tiny nation had already faced four coups in the last two decades, and a violent fifth one was looming. Fueled by ethnic and religious differences, the commander of the Republic of Fiji military forces, Commodore Frank Bainimarama, threatened to seize power from the democratically elected president, Ratu Josefa Iloilo. The world took Bainimarama's warning as seriously as possible and this would not be his first coup. The revered military leader had already forced two presidents to resign while holding absolute power over Fiji's armed forces. It was a delicate situation for the Australian military forces. The relationship between Bainimarama and Australian authorities was abysmal, and Australia feared that Australian nationals in Fiji would face violent consequences when the coup took place. Australia and Fiji had shared a strong bond going back to their shared origins as British penal colonies, and as the decades passed, Australia had invested significantly in the tiny nation. Its assets in the region were considerable. After every negotiation failed, Australia prepared for the worst-case scenario, the expedited extraction of high-risk Australian citizens from Fijian soil. Intense Exercises If Bainimarama decided to move against Australian personnel when he started his coup, the Australian Defence Force would have to act fast. Australia's naval forces in the region were limited, and they would have to do a lot with minimal assets. Consequently, the men conducting the task had to be prepared for a fierce and relentless operation. Whether it was due to the urgent situation or an overall can-do culture, the exercises performed by the Australian servicemen soon went beyond the search for excellence and efficiency and into dangerous and reckless territory. As the exercises progressed, members of the 171st Squadron became increasingly more aggressive during their flying operations until they essentially erased any margin of error. This was especially risky during landing maneuvers, in which pilots would come in at lower altitudes and higher speeds in an attempt to complete their missions in less time. The gradual change toward riskier flying behavior was also combined with a lack of adequate supervision, the pressure of giving the best performance possible, the relocation of the Sydney squadron, and the high stress involved in special operations. The combination of these factors led to a drastic decrease in safety measures. As Chief Marshal Houston would later explain, quote, they eventually got to a situation where they were flying on the absolute limit. They went past the right balance of safety and mission achievement. Despite the pilots' daredevil attitude, the Australian authorities had to admit that the pilots involved in the operational exercises were under the impression that their flying behavior was authorized and within the limits of safety regulations. A fateful day. The day of the accident was similar to previous exercises, where the Black Hawk 221 crew was rehearsing an operation for the urgent extraction of VIPs from a hostile region. The helicopter carried four crew and six soldiers from the Special Air Service Regiment as it approached HMAS Canimbia, 
for a swift and determined landing, as was needed in a particular operation like the one they were rehearsing. This time, however, the ever-increasing intensity and recklessness the pilot had shown for the past few months reached an all-time high, exceeding the aircraft's capabilities and surpassing all safety measures. As the Black Hawk descended rapidly, no margin for error was left for the hasty landing, and a pilot miscalculation led the helicopter into an uncontrollable descent. Instead of a soft touchdown over Canimbia's deck, Black Hawk 221 forcibly slammed against the surface to then tilt violently towards the rear, shattering its rotor tail against the ship's deck. With no way to control the aircraft and still being dragged by an overwhelming momentum, the helicopter bounced off the deck and fell overboard into the sea depth. A sense of dread and urgency overwhelmed the crew of Canimbia as the helicopter was instantly swallowed by the sea and they lost sight of it. The impact had been significant, but not lethal, so the sailors suspected that the helicopter's crew was likely fighting to free themselves from the plummeting wreck. Rescue boats were immediately dropped, as a single second could be crucial in saving trapped helicopter passengers. However, despite the heroic attempts to rescue everyone, the helicopter kept sinking, preventing the sailors on the surface from reaching the wreck. Impressively, most of the passengers managed to escape the doomed Black Hawk, and they were quickly rescued by their fellow servicemen. But as time dragged on, and some of the men still didn't surface, a piercing fear invaded the air. Sometime later, Captain Mark Bingley was rescued from the water and taken to the ship, but despite the medical staff's efforts, he did not survive. The depths also took Special Air Service Trooper Joshua Porter, who never managed to escape from the helicopter. It would take weeks for the remains of the trooper to be rescued from the seabed to be delivered to his family. Aftermath The incident was a humiliating blow for the Australian Defence Force, and the ensuing investigations forced the organisation to completely revamp its safety regulations and supervision protocols. Due to the numerous factors that led to the accident, no single individual or group of individuals was persecuted. After all investigations regarding the crash were concluded, the final report authorized by Supreme Court Justice David Levine found that the leading cause of the crash was pilot error, but it also added that this could not be viewed as the only factor and that no individual blame should be placed on the captain. The accident was deemed the result of a culmination of different factors, ranging from procedure to personnel attitude to supervision faults and, of course, pilot error. Still, Captain Mark Bingley's wife, Melissa Bingley, was disappointed by the resolution, arguing that the Defense Force's Black Hawk helicopter safety features were deficient. She also pleaded for the fitting of rotation devices on the helicopters. In her view, if the aircraft had not sunk so fast, her husband and troop reporter would have had more time to get out. Additionally, the widow criticized the lack of underwater escape training for pilots and crew members. Years later, an audit procedure found that the safety and supervising regulations had drastically improved aboard Australian Defence Force ships. Thank you for watching our video. Do you think the Australian Defence Force's authorities should have been punished for the accident? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. And for more exciting history-inspired content, don't forget to subscribe to all our Dark Documentaries channels, where we publish new videos every day. Stay tuned for more.